to support member states to address a myriad of crime, drugs crime, terrorism issues, but our mandate also expands into other areas such as um, maritime crime, okay. um, counter narcotics, treatment, rehabilitation, supporting um, 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 effective prosecution and judicial outcomes and so on. Um, so it's, it's, it's very diverse okay. in terms of the work um, that we do. Here in Indonesia, um, we are primarily focused on uh, five areas. Okay, um, what's that? Um, organized crime, okay. not, in the, not in the particular order that I'm giving you, but um, 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 so organized crime, um, addressing uh, drugs, drug problems, so whether that be rehabilitation or um, the um, counter narcotics, so the supply and the demand side, okay. um, as well as um, anti corruption. Um, terrorism, terrorism prevention, um, as well as um, criminal justice that deals that addresses some of the issues around uh, prison reform, crime prevention, and so on. And we have another um, 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 pillar which is primarily um, supporting um, Indonesia in the event of any crisis. Crises, as you know, Indonesia is very much prone to environmental. Um, episodes and so in those instances where it may be a, um, an environmental issue or a, um, a disaster and the criminal justice system or enforcement system has been degraded as a result of that we will certainly offer support and assistance okay. to the government um, to uh, respond to those things and we've done that in other countries as well. Oh, that's really great actually. Partnersnya, Pak Kantornya itu ada di Wina, Austria. Dan UNODC ini di Indonesia sendiri berfokus pada lima hal, yaitu yang pertama kejahatan terencana atau organized crime, yang kedua ada tentang uh, narkoba, di mana di sini uh, UNODC juga berfokus pada rehabilitasi narkoba dan lain sebagainya. Lalu yang ketiga ada anti-corruption, dan yang keempat ada terorisme, lalu yang kelima ada criminal justice, Sobat Adi Aksa. Dan uh, UNODC ini, merupakan sebuah organisasi yang juga tergabung dengan PBB ya dan ini merupakan suatu hal yang sangat luar biasa sekali lagi untuk uh, um, terdapat uh, kita dapat mengundang ya Mr. Valdi Brown di podcast Pro Satu ini and uh, from what you're telling us about the UNODC itself the scope is pretty wide yes, right yes. and how do you focus on that I mean you have a lot of focus range and you need to uh, focus on everything. How do you keep on maintaining on focusing on Well, that? I mean, we, we are located in countries around the world. Okay. Um, and each country has its own um, set of priorities. Oh, okay. And so we may not focus on everything okay. in every country, but we focus on those things in the particular country oh. where we work um, that um, supports the priorities of the government. Um, but also um, support um, responses to those threats that are unique to that country. Okay. I mean, nowadays most most criminal justice or crime threats are common to a lot of countries, okay. um, to include Indonesia. I mean, in, in this region, um, drug trafficking is a is a big threat to um, um, to all, almost all the countries in this region. Um, organized crime of course, transactional organized crime and those transactional organized crime group that are involved in the trafficking of drugs. And so we, 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 we essentially um, develop um, a scope of, of support with, um, in consultation with the government and depending on the priorities of the government that we then bring to bear. So while our mandate is pretty wide, um, we only will focus on those areas that um, is a priority in the, in the particular country. Okay, jadi sobat Adi Aksa, sobat Yadi yang dijelaskan oleh Mr. Colin Brown bahwa banyak sekali ya fokus dari UNODC. You said that the focus uh, of this of any country is um, you know limited and you have uh, several focus on each country. So in Indonesia, there's the focus is uh, those five that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, for the most part, for the most part, it's a uh, it's a combination of those five areas um, because each year we have a very formal, detailed consult consultation with the government. Okay. Um, and while we may bring forth ideas 
in terms of areas um, of focus. The government is also going to say, well, um, these are the types of things that we're looking um, for support from. Like for now, you know, for example, cybercrime okay. is a big thing. Yes. Now. Um, and so that's an area that we've begun to focus on um, because we recognize the threat that cybercrime brings. We've seen a proliferation of, of uh, an innovative, creative response to okay. be able to address those. Okay, so it's updated yearly. Yes, of course. It's updated yearly, and of course, because crime evolves. No. Right? And criminals are always trying to stay ahead no. of um, law enforcement. And so, um, one of the, the, the activities that we undertake is um, uh, uh, doing ongoing analysis okay. of the environment okay. to see what new forms of methodologies that criminals are undertaking so that we can then bring that information to our law enforcement counterparts and our government counterparts for them to be able to adapt those into their criminal justice responses. Okay, that is actually really great. Jadi sama tadi Aksa, uh, untuk di Indonesia sendiri, uh, tadi fokusnya ada lima, namun setiap tahun akan ada pembahasan untuk uh, menyesuaikan dengan kondisi yang ada pada tahun itu. Jadi uh, karena masyarakat dan bentuknya itu dinamis, jadi akan selalu ada um, perubahan dan juga pembahasan untuk uh, mengantisipasi dan menyelesaikan permasalahan-permasalahan tersebut sobat Adi Aksa. Uh, tadi Mr. Pauli Brown juga uh, menyebutkan tentang mencontohkan juga salah satunya adalah tentang cyber crime yang mungkin semakin meningkat uh, sejak adanya masa pandemi ini. Oke, okay, Mr. Pauli Brown. So, uh, for right now, UNODC have the agenda of visiting the house of restorative justice. Well, that is very interesting for me, but can you please tell our audience about the agenda itself? Yeah, I mean, we we wanted to visit um, um, Malang yeah. and Batu. Um, well, there are two primary th reasons why okay. we wanted to visit. Um, one is to visit the restorative justice house and of course to in in interact with the, um, the Attorney General's office here. But the other one is to visit with our co colleagues from um, the Genpas, from Bapas, okay. um, to look at a halfway house that they've established as part of um, their support to support the people who have been released from prison. Okay. Um, the, the restorative justice house is something that I had been hearing about through the media, um, that the Attorney General's office was using um, this concept of restorative justice house um, as part of its implementation of um, restorative justice. Um, and I'm, I'm familiar with some aspects of other restorative justice houses or centers as they're called. And I'm, I, I was certainly interested in wanting to see the, the operation here in terms of the house as it's been established, how does it work, what are the benefits and so on. Because part of what we do um, as a UNODC is globally, as we are working with countries, is to gather these different types of um, interventions okay. and innovation that we can share with counterparts around the world, right? And so, um, for Indonesia, looking at this restorative justice house, seeing how it works and so on, um, and looking at what is the promising nature of this, okay. that potentially can be packaged and shared to other people around the world who might be implementing restorative justice. Right. Okay. Jadi sobat Adi Aksa, uh, kebetulan kunjungan dari UNODC ke Kota Batu ini untuk Mr. Kolibang ada dua, yaitu yang pertama yaitu untuk mengunjungi rumah restoratif justice atau pondok seduluran dan yang kedua yaitu untuk mengunjungi batas uh, dan melihat bagaimana uh, sistem kita uh, untuk uh, dalam Bapas itu sendiri. Jadi bagaimana uh, sistem di Bapas itu uh, istilahnya kita mempersiapkan untuk orang-orang yang hendak uh, menyelesaikan uh, masalah hukumannya dan untuk di restoratif justice sendiri sobat tadi ya saya um, Mr. Kolib Brown ini tertarik untuk uh, ini merupakan salah satu bentuk implementasi dari restoratif justice dan Mr. Kolib Brown beserta dengan Odisi sangat tertarik untuk melihat bagaimana praktik rumah restoratif justice sejak di, uh, sejak berdiri hingga sekarang bagaimana rumah restoratif justice ini beroperasi dan apa saja manfaat yang sudah dirasakan dengan berdirinya rumah restoratif justice ini dan hal ini sangat menarik sobat tadi Aksa karena uh, penting untuk bisa melihat inovasi-inovasi yang menjanjikan untuk kemudian kita bisa saling sharing bersama dengan negara-negara lain dengan 
seluruh orang di seluruh. I know in other countries the way that has been practiced is that you have and in some countries they call it restorative justice center. Okay. Right, where you bring people together um, as part of the restorative justice process. Right, so you may bring the offending party and the the victim, the the, the community, and restoring the victim as they were. Right, so an offender commits a crime against a person. Right, there's a victim. Yeah. There's also a community okay. who may have been harmed by that crime. And so the other parties are satisfied with the okay. outcome. And, and that also helps you because in, in places that can avoid conflict as well, right? Because a person who may have committed a crime went to prison, okay. and this is the prison part of restorative justice, I think. Go to prison and is now going back to the community, okay. right? There could be people with still harboring feelings about this person who committed this crime, yeah. right? And so you can have issues of revenge and so on that occur. So restorative justice, the idea of restorative justice has a, a, a wide application in terms of how it can be, it can be used. Um, certainly with the Attorney General's office in terms of facilitating um, um, the process of restorative justice and being able to facilitate the parties coming together, the parties being able to resolve the issue and for the issue to then be resolved to the extent that it doesn't go further into the criminal justice system. That certainly is, is a benefit of um, restorative justice. Um, and so I'm looking forward to see the, the House and to see how it's um, and being used within the broader context of, um, of restorative justice. Oke, okay. jadi sobat tadi Asa menurut Mr. Polly Brown sendiri, uh, restorative justice ini sangat menarik ya. Dan Mr. Polly Brown juga uh, memberikan contoh di salah satu negara di mana terdapat juga sistem yang hampir sama, namun penyebutannya adalah restorative justice center, di mana idenya adalah untuk mengumpulkan pihak-pihak yang terlibat dalam suatu kasus untuk kemudian menyelesaikan masalah tersebut, mulai dari uh, apa yang uh, apa yang dirugikan dan lain sebagainya, sehingga tidak ada perasaan-perasaan Uh, dirugikan dari satu pihak atau pihak yang lainnya seperti itu dan Mr. Polly Brown sendiri sangat tertarik untuk uh, melihat bagaimana uh, implementasi atau praktik dari Restorative Justice House uh, di Kota Batu ini sobat tadi Oke okay, Mr. Polly Brown, it's very very interesting to have this talk with you and also with our audience or we refer it as sobat tadi Aksa and thank you very much for being here it's Thank you. Pleasure. thank you, and thank you very much for the opportunity to share about the NODC and we certainly look forward to our continuing efforts in supporting um, Indonesia in its, in its efforts to implement restorative justice. Okay, thank you very much and I hope you enjoy your visit in Batu. Looking forward to it. And I wish I could spend more time. Oh, um, yeah. But, um, we, we, it's we a can. short trip. Yeah, it's a short trip. Yes, okay. it's a short trip. Oke, okay, baik Sobat Adiaksa, dan terima kasih sekali untuk Mr. Colby Brown yang telah hadir hari ini dan memberikan kita banyak sekali ilmu-ilmu baru tentang uh, restoratif justice ini tentang UNODC. Dan sampai jumpa lagi di episode podcast selanjutnya. Jangan lupa untuk terus ikuti pembaran terbaru dari YouTube channel Kejaksaan Negeri Batu. Jangan lupa untuk like, comment, dan share ke teman-teman kamu. Dan terus ikuti pembaran terbaru dari kita. Saya Nisato Cepebian, mengucapkan terima kasih dan sampai jumpa.